Welcome to part 5 of Let's Play Crypt of the Sorcerer by Ian Livingstone. At the end of the last part, I was about to read paragraph 244. Here we go. Walking as quietly as possible, you creep into the shadow of the trees in the direction of the cries. Sim suddenly calls to you, saying that he has stumbled over the body of a man. You carry the man back to the firelight and see that his body is covered with deep gashes. He is an old man with a long beard and a weather-beaten face. You dress his wounds as best as, as best you can and give him a tot of your healing potion. Okay, so I've used another tot of my healing potion. So let's uh, note that on my adventure sheet. Where is it? Okay, so, that, uh, so that's two used. Brilliant. Um, whether he is unconscious or asleep... You cannot tell, but he does not stir again until morning. He wakes with a groan and says in a laboured voice, Thank you for saving me, strangers. Yesterday afternoon I was on my way to my friend's tower, taking a shortcut through the forest when I was mauled by a bear. I should have known better than to walk through Darkwood Forest. My name is Budron. Budron, shouts Sim excitedly. We were waiting for you with Yastromo. What fortune that we have found you. Add one luck point. Okay, so effectively we've traded a tot of healing potion for a luck point, so that puts us up to 10. Whoops, there needs to be a space there, there we go. Okay, um, Budron tells you that he is able to travel and volunteers to ride behind Sim on his horse. You ride on past Darkwood Forest and then head northwest until Budron finally, t finally tells you to stop sometime during the afternoon. This is as far as I go. The graveyard is situated in a clearing in the middle of that wood, he says, pointing a finger northwards. I'm too superstitious to enter that wood, and so I'll say goodbye and wish you well. You cannot persuade Budron to stay with you, and you watch him limp off back the way you came. With a slight hesitation, you urge your horses into the wood. You soon come to the clearing, where you see the graveyard which has long since been abandoned. Uh, the gravestones are broken and moss-covered, and weeds and grasses grow tall. You draw your swords and walk carefully towards the nearest gravestone. If you are wearing a bone ring with a skull etched into it, turn to 139. If you are not wearing this ring, turn to 333. Um, turn to 333. Okay, um, are we wearing this bone ring? Let's have a look. Okay, we have a gold ring with a large jewel. Um, we have a skull ring. So, yep, that's the one. So, we're going to turn to 139. Here we go. Oh, wonderful. As soon as you enter the clearing, something sinister starts to happen. The earth around the tombstone shifts and suddenly a skeletal arm thrusts up into the air. A skull appears and then another until you see six skeletons climb out of their graves. Each is armed with a rusted sword. Animated by your cursed ring, three skeletons step jerkily towards you and the other three walk towards Sim. First skeleton, skill 6, stamina 5. Second skeleton, skill 6, stamina 6. And third skeleton... Skill 5, Stamina 6. If you win, turn to 290. Um, I'm assuming I fight them one at a time. Um, oh no. On my notes it states to fight them together. So I have to fight them together. So that means I have to fight... Um, that means I have to fight one and then... You know, and then fend off the blows from the others. Okay, so let's put that all down. First, second, third. Okay, off we go. Yeah, sorry about that. I had to refer to my notes there. Okay, so first skeleton. Uh, skill six, stamina five. Second skeleton. Skill six, stamina six. And third skeleton. Skill 5, stamina 6. Okay, was that right? Yep, 6, 5, 6, 6, and 5, 
six. Okay, so I'm going to fight the first one first, and I have to roll for the second and third one. And if I, if I win, it just means I fend off their blows, and I don't do them any damage. If they win, they hurt me as normal. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so first uh, skeleton is six five. So let's uh, you know let's try and defeat him first. So six five. My skill is twelve. Okay, six plus six is twelve. I get 18. So 12 to 18. That puts him down to 3. Right now we have to battle the other two. Okay, 6 and 5. 6 plus 4 is 10. I, um, I get uh, 19. So 10 to 19. That just means I fend off their blow and don't hurt them. Um, or it. Uh, and the third one, skill 5. So. 5 plus 10 is 15, I get 20, so 15 to 20, so that means I just fend off his blow. Okay, so we're fighting the first one again, so 6 plus 11 is 17, I get 20, 17 to 20. Put some down to 1. Okay, 6 plus um, 8 is 14. I get 19, so 14 to 19, means I just fend off his blow again. Okay, 5 plus 7 is 12, I get 16, so 12 to 16, so I fend off his blow. Okay, first skeleton, um, 6, whoops, get that back, 6 plus 8 is 14, I get 14, so neither of us hurts the other. Okay, second skeleton, 6 plus 9 is 15, I get 19, so 15 to 19. And 5 plus 6 is 11, I get 18, so 11 to 18. Okay, so we're still fighting the first one. 6 plus 5 is 11. I get 17. So 11 to 17. All right, that's the end of the first one. But we, uh, but, uh, but we have to fend off the blows from the other two, don't we? So 6 plus 7 is 13. I get 22. So 13 to 22. And 5 plus 3 is 8. I get... 23, so 8 to 23. Whoops. Okay, now we're fighting the second one properly. So 6 plus 8 is 14. I get 20, so 14 to 20. Means I do him some damage. It puts him down to 4. Okay, third one we're fending off. So 5 plus 10 is 15. I get 14. I knew my luck would run out. So 15 to 14, that means he hurts me. That's the second two I've managed to get. Um, it's one out of 36 probability for each two uh, you know, that, uh, that I'm getting. So I'm quite unlucky there. Anyway, back to the skeletons. So second skeleton, 6 plus 6 is 12. I get 18, so 12 to 18. And 5 plus... 8 is 13, I get 19, so 13 to 19. All right, so I just, you know, don't hurt him. Did I put that down? No, I didn't put the stamina down. Um, I got him twice, didn't I? Um, yeah. Yeah, 12 to 18, because I got him before, didn't I? And that only took four hits, so that corresponds to the four there so yeah um so i did get him twice okay so now we're um fighting the first skeleton again six plus six is 12 i get 20 so 12 to 20. okay that's the end of the first i mean the second skeleton All right now we're just fending off the third one then we're fighting them properly five plus ten is fifteen i get nineteen so fifteen to nineteen so that just fends him off Okay, now we're fighting him properly. 5 plus 8 is 13. I get 14. That was close. That's the third two. Um, 13 to 14. 
It's the third two I've managed to obtain. Okay, puts them down to four. Um, five plus nine is 14. I get 19, so 14 to 19. Puts them down to two. Yeah, it was the first one that only had five stamina. Okay, and theoretically, lastly, um, famous last words, five plus four is nine, and I get 18. Good, nine to 18. So, um, his skill is too uh, small, even for famous last words. Okay, that's the end of that. Let's remove any buzzing, should there be any. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay. If you win, turn to 290. Not entirely sure how we can kill a skeleton since it, you know, especially just sort of chop the bones up, I suppose. Anyway, Sim is as skilled as you are with his sword and defeats his three skeletons without too much difficulty. You start to scrape the moss from the gravestones to read the inscriptions, and the third gravestone yields what um, yields for what you are looking. Um, Tamal's epitaph in ancient script it reads although i lie here i am not yet done uh, the dark power continues my soul is my son tamal died in this world aged 108 years okay so you memorize the epitaph while sim looks at the other open graves okay so tamal 108 let's note that down in the information okay tamal colon 108 here we go um, suddenly he calls out saying that he can see the end of a silver rod protruding from the soil you walk over to the grave to see for yourself if you wish to pull the rod out of the grave turn to 389 if you would rather leave the graveyard immediately and ride northeast towards Stonebridge turn to 234 okay we are going to pull the rod out of the grave and turn to 389, which is here somewhere. Yes, there we are. As soon as you touch the silver rod, the wind starts to howl, throwing leaves up into the air. You hear the sinister laugh of a woman above the noise of the wind, and suddenly a lightning bolt shoots down from the sky, followed by a roll of thunder overhead. Test your luck. If you are lucky, turn to 121. If you are unlucky, turn to 170. Okay. Um, okay, our luck is currently... Um, 10 so we need this dice roll to be 10 or lower um, i have it on good authority that uh, this isn't uh, this isn't a death thing i think we just lose some stamina and a skill point so we need this to be 10 or less and it was good however um we have to lose a luck point not a luck point um, yes we do yes we have to test our luck don't we yeah so we're losing a luck point anyway so we were lucky and that means we are turning to 121 Here we are. The lightning hits a nearby tree, splitting the trunk in two. Smoke rises from the charred wood, and you think yourself lucky to have escaped injury. Turn to 300. The woman's laughter drifts away on the wind, and all is calm once again. You examine the rod, which is about one and a half feet in length and see that there is a screw thread at one end and a solid ball at the other end with the number 13 stamped into it you discover that the ball unscrews to reveal a piece of paper rolled up tightly inside the rod the paper bears the message to know my use add my halves together if you have the other half of the rod and can come up with a total turn to that numbered reference if you do not know the total, you have no option but to take the half rod with you and ride north east towards Stonebridge, turn to 234. Okay, so Okay, so it has a number 13 on it. And we should have the other one. Um where is it? Oh, that's equipment, sorry. Um Yes, yeah, silver rod 37. So I have silver rod 13. 
So it's 37 and 13. If you, uh, to know my use, add my halves together. Um, so 13 plus 37 is 50. Therefore, we're going to turn to paragraph 50. Okay, so we're turning to paragraph 50. Off we go. After screwing the two halves of the rod together, you decide to find out if it has any magical properties. You tap it on the ground, but nothing happens. Finally, you point it at a rabbit running by and see to your amazement the rabbit stopped dead in its tracks. You walk up to the rabbit and discover that it is completely paralysed. You now have a rod of paralysis at your disposal. Add one luck point. With your spirits high, you ride out of the wood northeast towards Stonebridge. Turn to 234. Uh, and the rabbit loses a luck point because, you know, it's paralysed. Anyway, um, so we have a rod of paralysis. Rod of paralysis. There we go. And we had a luck point. So we're up to 10 again. Goody. Fantabulous. Okay. Now we're heading to 234. So on the rabbit's adventure, it's lost a luck point. Um... The rest of the day passes without any problems and it is almost nightfall when Stonebridge comes into view. If you wish to camp outside Stonebridge, turn to 92. If you would rather ride into Stonebridge, turn to 316. We are going to ride into Stonebridge and therefore we're going to turn to 316. Within an hour, you reach a bridge which crosses a stream and leads you into Stonebridge. Two dwarf guards standing on the bridge challenge you, and you reply that you are a friend of Yastromo and need to speak to Bori. Uh, the dwarf's mood suddenly changes, and they become very friendly and talkative. They lead you through the village to some stables where Bori lives. You knock on the door and are greeted by a smiling dwarf with chubby red cheeks and a long beard. Hello, he says cheerfully. My name is Bori, and you must be Yastromo's friends. Come in and help yourself to some hot vegetable stew I've just prepared. I'll take care of your horses. You accept Boris's kind hospitality and eat until you feel you cannot move. Add to stamina. <laughs> That's quite funny. Um, until you ca until you feel you cannot move. Add to stamina points. Okay. Um, okay, puts us up to twenty again. That's good. So only three for maximum now. It's very difficult to get our. Yeah, stamina up to maximum. This is a very difficult book. Ian Livingstone doesn't pull any punches. Bori rejoins you to hear... Um, I'll start again. Bori rejoins you to hear about your quest, as all dwarfs love to hear tales of adventure. At last, when he seems content that he knows everything there is to know, he says, well, I suppose it's time to rest. Make yourselves some beds in the hay, and in the morning I'll show you something special. My invention. In the morning, after a quick breakfast, you s stroll outside to see Bori and his new invention. And his new invention. Turn to three hundred and fifty-three. Outside in the yard, you see the strangest sight of your life. A huge balloon, as tall as Yastromo's tower, is being filled by Bori with hot air from a fire. A group of dwarfs is holding onto the ropes to keep the balloon from floating away into the sky. Ugh, excuse me, just yawned there. Um, this is my invention, shouts Bori excitedly over the crackling of the fire. It's called a hot air balloon. It can carry people great distances distances through the skies in a basket hanging from the balloon. You can soar through the air across mountains and lakes, driven on by air currents and the wind. Now I believe we must try to find the Gargantus beast. So, if you would like to climb aboard, we'll take to the skies. And if you have any idea which way we should go, you should tell me now. The wind is blowing in a south-easterly direction, so I hope you don't want to go west. You are full of wonder at this amazing balloon, and you climb quickly into the basket. Bori gives the order for the dwarfs to release the holding ropes, and the balloon rises smoothly and swiftly upwards. At first you feel nervous, but soon the beautiful view and the tranquillity make you relax, and you begin to enjoy the silent journey. You look down at the tiny at the tiny treetops of Darkwood Forest and think about the dangers that lie hidden beneath them. Well, asks Bori, where do you want to go? Will you reply, the Forest of Spiders? 
10 to 34. Uh, the Western Flatlands, 10 to, 10 to 135 or the plane of bronze turned to 210. Okay, if you remember, um, in our information, uh, Gargantus resides in the howling tunnels of the western flatlands. Therefore, we're going to head towards the western flatlands and turn to 135. After leaving Darkwood Forest behind, you passed over the western edge of Moonstone Hills, where two days previously you had made your dangerous trek. Now, the Forest of Spiders soon appears, looking much the same as Darkwood Forest, and you know that similar unseen dangers are lurking below. Once past the forest, the balloon carries you steadily southeast until you drift over the southern edge of Moonstone Hills to reach the flatlands. Any idea where to land? asks Borry, speaking through clenched teeth that grip his old pipe. I'll, I'll say that again. Any idea where to land? asks Borry, uh, speaking through clenched teeth that grip his old pipe. Uh, you scan the ground below, looking for any sign of a cave or tunnel entrance. Test your luck. If you are lucky, turn to 59. If you are unlucky, turn to 160. Okay, so our luck is... 10 again, so we need this dice roll to be 10 or less, which it was good. However, we have to lose a luck point. So down to 9 again. Uh, I still would have won that even without the extra luck point I got because it was 9. But, you know, it's always best to be, always best to have more luck, of course. Anyway, if you are lucky, turn to 59. I think if we're unlucky, I think we just uh, have to spend more time, you know, finding this... Uh, Gargantus beast or whatever. Anyway, um, you pass over a small hillock and see what appears to be the entrance to a tunnel. You call in excitement to Borry to land and he immediately releases air from the balloon. You drop gently down until Borry tells you to hold on tight as you are about to land. The basket hits the ground with a thump and rolls over but nobody is hurt. You are all in good spirits and begin to laugh as you try to disentangle yourselves from one another. Uh, you fold up the deflated balloon and hide it with the basket in the entrance to the tunnel. Let's hope the Gargantis beast is not just a legend, says Sim, although I might regret having said that later. You draw your swords, light torches that you brought with you, and walk guardedly down the sloping tunnel. Five minutes later, you arrive at a junction. If you, if you wish to turn left, turn to 222. If you wish to turn right, turn to 90. Okay, we are going to turn right and therefore turn to 90. The tunnel twists and turns, and your torches cast eerie shadows on the rough walls. Suddenly you hear footsteps marching towards you, and you ready yourselves for combat. Six ugly creatures, very much like a blend of ore control, with large ears and tusk-like teeth, march into view. They have long, wild hair, plaited with bones, and their armour is made of large metal plates with protruding spikes and studs. The Dorogar are berserk warriors who revel at the opportunity to inflict wounds with their cruel weapons. Choosing two opponents each, you run into battle. First Dorogar, skill 9, stamina 9. Second Dorogar, skill 9, stamina 10. If you win, turn to 144. Okay, so we have to fight these together because it doesn't say, or rather it doesn't read to um, fight them one at a time. There they are, lovely creatures. Um, right, so first and second Dorogon, um, Dorogar, 9-9 nine, nine and 9-10. Okay. Blimey. Typic I've said this before, but typical Ian Livingstone. Look at all the creatures we're fighting. Okay, first Dorogar. Okay, what is it? 9-9 nine, nine, nine and 9-10. Nine, 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 and second Goroga, uh, Doroga, skill nine, stamina ten. Okay, so uh, my skill is twelve, and we have to, you know, fend off the attack of the other that we're not fighting. Anyway, um, my skill is twelve, his is nine. They're both nine. Off we go. Okay, nine plus seven is sixteen. I get 15, so 16 to 15. 
means he takes first blood, which puts me down to 18 stamina points. But we have to uh, we have to fight the other one to see if I fend off the blow. Nine plus nine is 18. I get 22. So 18 to 22. That means I do, but I don't hurt him. Um, okay, nine plus six is fifteen. I get twenty-one. So fifteen to twenty-one. Down to seven. Okay, nine plus four is thirteen. I get fifteen. So thirteen to fifteen. That means I just fend off his blow. So no damage done. Okay, 9 plus 10 is 19. I get 18. So 19 to 18. Means he does me some damage again, which puts me down to 16 stamina. Other one. 9 plus 7 is 16. I get 15. So 16 to 15, and I lose some more stamina. So 16 to 15. Okay, off we go again. 9 plus 6 is 15. I get 22. So 15 to 22. Puts him down to 5. Okay, 9 plus 5 is 14. I get 17. So 14 to 17. Oh yeah, don't hurt him, do we? 9 plus 6 is 15. I get 17, 15 to 17, puts them down to 3, okay, 9 plus 5 is 14, I get 20, so 14 to 20, it means I fend off his blow, okay, 9 plus 5 is 14, I get 14, so 14 all, neither of us hurts each other, okay, the other one, 9 plus 3 is 12, I get 21. So 12 to 21. Don't hurt him though. Okay, 9 plus 8 is 17, I get 20. So 17 to 20. Puts him down to 1. Okay, 9 plus 9 is 18, I get 23. So 18 to 23. Um, yeah, okay, so theoretically the last one, 9 plus 8 is 17, I get 22, so 17 to 22, that's the end of the first uh, Dorogar, but I have to fend off the other blow, 9 plus 10 is 19, I get 19, so 19 to 19, which means I do fend it off, which is good. Okay, now we're just fighting the, uh, the second one. 9 plus 8 is 17, I get 23, 17 to 23. Put some down to 8. 9 plus 5 is 14, I get 22, 14 to 22. Means I win, put some down to 6. 9 plus 8 is 17, I get 17, so neither of us hurts the other. Okay, 9 plus 3 is 12, I get 19, so 12 to 19. Put some down to 4. 9 plus 8 is 17, I get 16, 17 to 16. Means I lose some stamina. Puts me down to 12. Okay, 9 plus 4 is 13. I get 21. So 13 to 21. Whoops. Puts them down to, uh, to 2. Okay, 9 plus 7 is 16. I get 22, 16 to 22. Puts him down to naught, and that's the end of Mr. and Mr., or rather Messers, whatever you want to call it, um, first and second Dorogar.
Right, uh, that's the end of that. Let's remove any buzzing, should there be any. There we go, lovely. Okay, if you win, turn to 144. We did, so off we go. Bori and Sim also manage to defeat their opponents, although both suffer flesh wounds. While they bandage their wounds, you search the bodies and find a leather bag on the belt of their leader. Inside, you find a bronze key and some brown powder in a small round tin. You pocket the key and hand the powder to Sim to see if he knows what it is. Okay. Okay, let's just write that, or rather note down that we have a bronze key. I wonder why bronze is the metal for third place, because, you know, gold and silver are, you know, they're, uh, they're sort of chemical elements and they're, and they're precious, whereas bronze is, is an alloy of, uh, what is it, copper and uh, tin or something. So, you know, it's not really precious. Why is bronze third place? I don't know. Yeah, zinc is copper and... No, not zinc. Um, brass is copper and zinc. And I think bronze is copper and tin or something like that. I don't know. Pewter is lead and something. Anyway, enough of that. Um, anyway. You pocket the key and hand the powder to Sim to see if he knows what it is. Snuff, he says scornfully. Horrible stuff. He empties he empties the tin onto the ground, and you decide what to do next. If you wish to continue along the tunnel, turn to 398. If you would rather walk back to the junction and try the other passage, turn to 222. Okay, we are going to continue along the tunnel, and therefore turn to 398. A few minutes later, you hear the dull sound of hammers hitting rocks and the rattle of chains. If you wish to investigate, turn to 214. If you would, ra if you would rather walk back to the junction and try the other passage, turn to 338. Okay, um, we are going to investigate and turn to 214. Okay, and we will decide what to do, or rather, we will read this paragraph with its lovely picture of zombies or whatever they are in the next video. So I'll note down that we're on paragraph 214, and it's unread. So 214, and it's unread. And I'll just make some more encounter boxes, because Lord knows I need some more of them. Okay, there we go. Uh, anyway, that's that. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed part five. Um, is it part five? I think it is. Yeah, can't remember now. Um, yeah, in the next part, we'll be reading paragraph 214. And then... Um, uh, and then... Uh, just a moment. You know, and then deciding what to do, whatever it is that we're doing there. Um, okay, so thanks very much for watching and goodbye.